Ms. Towner will be speaking about models for capturing the complexity of eBGP updates using public data. Our speaker is an electronics engineer and works in planning and development of Antil's network in Uruguay. Welcome, Jose. Hello, thank you for your attention. And before starting, I would like to explain the internet ecosystem today and how much routing information is there. Today we have more than 73,000, almost 74,000 autonomous systems. We have more than 900,000 IPv4 routes and more than 160,000 IPv6 routes, almost 180,000. So all this information is a large amount of information and is then multiplied when we have within an autonomous system a network that has routers that learn all that information and then is propagated internally to an internal route reflector or to various route reflectors. Now in that case what we have is that for each of the routers that learns all this information and then propagates this, we will then have a multiplication of the number of routes times the number of routers. In the case of this slide, we have four routers that learn the global routing table. And this means that we have more than 4 million routes. This is a very large amount of information which is not manageable for an individual when analyzing a problem in the network. An approach to study this complexity and to reduce this is to group the routes based on the internal route within our network. In this example, we have routes A and D in red. So we can say that these belong to the same class of prefixes because within the network, routing to any of those networks will be the same. We can say that they belong to the same class. That class will be different from the class to which the routes C and E belong, which are the same ones. They are routed in the same way, but in a different way compared to A and D routes. When analyzing this, we took data from a service provider in Uruguay, Antel. This is a network that is quite big when compared with other players in the network. This data are old. They date back to 2022 because we're going to share with you some of the results that we organized in 2021 and in 2022. At that time, the network was already quite big and could be compared with other important players in the market. In an, analysis. in an initial analysis, when we prepared this, we saw that the number of classes was 254. So hundred, there were hundreds for more than 800,000 800, prefixes in IPv4, and four of these classes had more than 70% of all the information. So not only was it the complexity of having several million routes within the network, and this was reduced to the level of hundreds, but from these hundreds, only a limit number of classes had the largest amount of routes. So when analyzing the information, we have to see that those classes that have the largest number of routes are those that contain the routers that learn the global routing table. And at a second level, we have those routers that have the connections with the IXPs. In other words, the routers that show me the full routing table plus the routers where I have the connections with the IXPs are those that provide the largest number of routes to the network. In addition to that, one of the interesting things that we observed was that if I have two routers through which I learn the global routing table, if we have the same information learned from two providers, then there were some providers that provided many more routes. This is something that we viewed 
was associated to the definition of cone. This has been defined by Kaida. The cone is made up of the autonomous system, its clients, and the clients of the clients. The larger the number of autonomous systems included in the provider's cone, then the larger the amount of routing information will be provided. That will be provided. So, to sum up, an autonomous system. The number of routes provided by each router, and depending on the connections, we have at the top the providers that should be the full routing table. Then we have the IXPs with multilateral IXPs, when we have the bilateral peers, and then we have the clients. This can vary slightly, but normally this is the way it works. Now, going on with this study and trying to generalize this because one of the things that I f forgot to say in the previous slide is the following. This approach of studying the classes was done based on a previous study presented at LACNIC 33 by Claudio Riso. And in his study, together with Christina Meyer, what they did was when reducing the complexity, they could estimate the route reflectors of the network, which is not something easy to solve from a mathematical standpoint, to improve the outgoing traffic engineering. So the concept of this study that we're presenting is to generalize the results for any autonomous system within our service. So in the attempt to understand if this occurs for other providers and for other ASs, we started to establish the classes based on the origin autonomous systems for that information. In this case, if I have the autonomous system of origin 1 and 5, and considering the four border routers of the AS that we are studying, we see that these can be reached through router A. So we can say they belong to the same class. If we take as an example autonomous systems 2 and 6, these two autonomous systems, AS being studied, can be reached through routers B, C, and D. So they will be included in a different class, but the two are within the same class. So having redefined things, we took again the data from Antel, and one year later we saw we obtained that we obtained a similar result. So we had classes in the hundreds and the number of autonomous and only a few classes had the largest share of the information from the 73 plus autonomous systems. These the routing was reduced to these in 300 classes, and 10 of these contained 85% of all the ASNs. The intention is to generalize this for any autonomous system. Now, the problem we had is that we started to try and obtain routing information from other providers. This was not given to us. So. In order to continue with the study, what we did was to prepare a model regarding the connection of an a autonomous system, and with public information, we tried to obtain the same results. Now, prior to showing the model and the public information, let me make a brief review. Maybe you all know this already, but let me make this very rapidly to explain the relationship between the different autonomous systems, looking at the two most important ones, the relationship between a client and a provider and between peers. Between a client and a provider is as follows. The client announces the networks to the providers and the net client's networks, and this is then propagated to third parties. And the provider then teaches all the routes it has, although the providers provide the options of teaching a partial view of the routing. 
the, re the uh, peer to peer relations and uh, that uh, information that uh, a peer teaches uh, another peer is not. Uh, disclosed uh, to uh, third parties but remains in uh, uh, the, the autonomous system of each of those two peers. So what is the public information that we take? Well, the, the data that we got were from uh, RIPE and uh, RIPE views, the public routing data. And basically, there we collect uh, RMT uh, format files. I invite you to to uh, take a look at them because I think it's very interesting. It's useful for everybody. And we collect routing uh, data. I establish a BGP information against uh, a route view or RIPE uh, RIS, uh, um, and uh, I pass my BGP data, and they will um, catch the updates. There's a type of file that, in the case of RIS RIPE, uh, it is uh, stored under the name B view, and basically what it does is for eight hours it takes the updates and it it gives me the routing table. So with that information we are going, we are going to study it's important to consider that this information has uh, certain uh, limitations because if i want to study at an autonomous system that is not directly connected to a collector there's information that i will miss for instance that of peers because as i said earlier the information of a of a peer does, is not transferred to a third one, so I won't see this peer, for instance. So this study will uh, limit uh, itself to the autonomous system that are connected to a RIPE or a use uh, collector. So to uh, see the model of interconnection, we are going to take the files that I mentioned earlier. We are going to match the attributes of all the AS path attributes of all the routes uh, that I'm setting. And uh, with that, I'm going to obtain the peers, the adjacent autonomous systems, adjacent to the uh, autonomous system that is being studied, we know those are peers. As the second point of the model, we are going to keep all the autonomous systems of origin, the 74,000, uh, and the closest paths to each of them and determine through what peer we're going to reach that. For AS6057, um, um, the autonomous system um, 61594 can be obtained more closely from 61586 because through 51587 the path is longer. As the third point of the modeling of this mechanism, we are going to estimate the number of the routers of the autonomous system. Remember that this is like a black box. I suppose that the autonomous system is a black box and I'm finding out what the routing is because they didn't give me any information. So, I don't know how many routers they have to estimate that. Let's count based on the number of routers of sites that uh, it claims to have. That information usually is usually provided by the service providers because they are interested in selling services in those places. As the fourth issue, I'm going to assign the different border routers. What are the peers? That is, I determined that, for instance, 61586 is a peer of 6057. I need to test to say in which of those routers it is connected. And as the fourth item, and with that information, that later on I'm going to say how I do it with that assignment of the peers to different routers, I'm going to be, to be able to see 
what router enables me to reach each of the origin autonomous systems. So, and with that information, I'm going to be able to calculate the classes as I showed earlier. Now, some magic. How do I know what autonomous system or how do I assign the peers to the various routers? Well, let's differentiate between uh, the different connection types that a service provider has. We have with providers, with IXPs that send us a multilateral connection, with uh, peers bilaterally and with clients. With providers, what are the providers of an autonomous system? That's public uh, information because that can be seen in the internet. And there are sites, including Kaida, that shows th who the providers of a certain autonomous system are. What are the IXPs that a certain autonomous system is connected to. That's also uh, in the public domain because the IXPs say who the, their members are, the explicit it. Here, there's an example of M6, for instance, who are the members of their website. And with that information and remembering that the providers and multilateral IXPs were those that uh, uh, contributed with more routers, we are going to load our model. So with, if we know who the providers of the autonomous system under study is, we are going to use an algorithm that uh, to assign them to the various routers. Also implicating randomly if they have more than one connection or not. The connections with multilateral IXPs, multilateral IXPs, as you may be aware, most of them draw their autonomous system from uh, the uh, um, uh, CPAP. So I see them as if they were directly connected. So randomly, I say in which router I'm going to have a connection with a certain IXP. And then all the members of that IXP are going to be assigned to that router and the rest of the peers have a minor weight and I'm going to assign them randomly to each of the routers when calculating the classes that won't weigh so much. As a result, we had that uh, for 2022 data, doing this under those conditions, we had about 100, about 200 uh, uh, mean uh, amount of classes obtained. This means randomizations, so I have to do the calculation several times to get the mean result. Anyway, the d standard deviation is quite low. And if we take the mean number of cases with more origins ac accumulated, the mean is for the 10 largest ones is 89%. So the two largest classes have 89% of the origins accumulated. for 500 runs. As a conclusion, uh, or the conclusions of this work, we managed to use public uh, data to know the routing and to form the classes for an autonomous system. We managed to model the interconnection of an ISP. And with that, with the public data, collected to do calculations uh, based on uh, the information provided by the provider. The results were similar to the previous ones. And as future work, we will continue to adjust the model and also to calculate this for other providers to extend the results. 
let me also say something that I think is important that I omitted at the beginning, and it is that this information that is collected in uh, Rice and uh, Rice View is very useful. Here there are many network administrators, and I think it's important not just because of the study of this uh, more uh, academic uh, work, but also at a practical level. It's very useful to have the information because it gives us the history of uh, how the routing information uh, traveled in my network so I can solve problems and I am also collaborating with future work. So only just because I'm a user for this work and my other work jobs, I invite you to shorten the information to this type of collectors. And finally, I'd like to thank LACNIC, Frida Program, Universidad de Montevideo, University of the Republic, and until for cooperating in this project. Any questions in the room for our pre uh, speaker? I maybe you didn't notice, but I just tripped and I almost fell. Uh, this is something that we discussed with Jose and uh, with uh, the thesis uh, code. I think it's very good uh, uh, work. But uh, Jose said that it was very difficult for him to find the real information of the other operators. And this is something that I'm asking everyone. And so far as the operators in the region can contribute with data, to be able to validate a model like this, notice that the capacity of uh, compacting the uh, BGP table that you would have with this, but more work is needed to validate it better. So if you can, I invite you all to donate data. As a matter of fact, at LACNIC, uh, you, ha you get the, uh, an explanation of how to do it. So hopefully, we'll receive more routing tables. Thank you. Well, we don't have any remote questions. So a big round of applause for Jose. Thank you for your excellent presentation. And with this, we finish this long